Hello, YouTube. This is Prince Magnum One coming to you from Washington, Missouri. Um, this would be my very first YouTube video. Um, how y'all doing? I excuse, uh, please excuse me for the quality of the video camera. We're going to do this the best we can. Uh, I'm one of those guys who enjoys YouTube surfing every now and again, and I came across some stuff. Uh, the five things you would take to the zombie apocalypse. Uh, I've seen a lot of people do these videos, and I really, you know, I really had a lot of fun watching them. I want to thank all those people who've, uh, who've posted those. I myself uh, have not been tagged for this. Uh, there was one particular gentleman who said, if you have a camera of any sort, would you do one? And tagging everybody. You know, do one if you can. Uh, he, he thought it might be insightful. He might learn something. So here's my chance. Um, real quick, we're going to go over this. Uh, I don't believe in the whole zombie apocalypse, but I do believe that everyone should be prepared for a survival situation, whether it's a natural disaster. Uh, there's also some people who believe that the Western civilization may break down because of the way things are going right now in our, in our present day time. Uh, whatever you believe in, zombie apocalypse, uh, natural disaster, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, I believe that you should be prepared, so I guess you could say that I hope that this is informative or at least entertaining to those of you out there who view these sort of things. So let's get on with it. Uh, let's start with the first item I would take of my five things for the zombie apocalypse. Um, the first on my list would be my German K98 Mauser. I see a lot of people talking about uh, different types of assault rifles, different pump-action shotguns. Uh, most of what I usually see is a lot of people going with the AR-15 variants. Um, and that's cool and all, but one of the things that I will point out uh, is that this is a bolt-action rifle. This is, It has an internal box magazine that holds five rounds. Um, you're just going to do a heck of a lot more damage with a bigger bullet. And uh, from what I've been able to understand, um, you know, your rounds such as the 223 or 5.56 NATO um, just is not going to hold a candle to, you know, the power of an 8mm cartridge. Um, I absolutely love this cartridge. Uh, one of the other things I decided to go with uh, with my K98 in this particular case, um, let's go ahead and talk about the features real quick, uh, besides such a big, nasty bullet. First and foremost, um, other than the sling and the side saddle and the extra uh, butt padding I've put on this rifle, it pretty much what you see is what you get. I'm still using old iron sights, which are very user-friendly. Um, we're talking about a bolt action that is tried and true. Uh, some of your best uh, commercial bolt action rifles use the Mauser extractor anyways. Um, underneath the padding, this is one of the main reasons why I work with this. If for some reason I run out of ammo, because I don't believe that I will have to worry about it jamming, it is a bolt action. Chances of it jamming like an auto are going to be slim to none. But for whatever reason, if I run out of ammunition, I'm this rifle has a lot of features that I love about it. It does have a bayonet lug. I do not have a bayonet right now, but it does have the lug and plans are in motion to hopefully get a good bayonet for the front of this. If I run out of ammo, this thing is a spear. Even if I don't have the bayonet look, I see a lot of people, you know, saying they would take a baseball bat, a good old Louisville slugger. Well, underneath the padding on the back of the rifle is a steel plate. Batter up. Uh, you know, German soldier style, if you will. So, you know, other than the few things that I've done to this thing, um, it's definitely a very reliable weapon, and it's soldier-friendly. I am not a soldier, but to me, you know, if you're going to go into some sort of uh, survival situation, soldiers have to survive every day. So, first on the list would be my German K98. Uh, second on my list, uh, you got to have a good sidearm. you got to have something very reliable. I see a lot of guys talking about taking 9 millimeters, 40 Smiths, uh, even occasionally uh, 45 ACPs. Well, I'm going to show you one right now that I will not take, uh, and I'm going to explain a couple of things why. This would be my 1911A1, which was made by Rock Island Armory. Um, 
you know, the only thing that I've done to this pistol is I've put different grips on it. Um, you know, because I, the slab wooden sides just when my hand, if I'm out shooting, my hands start sweating. I couldn't get a good grip on it. Uh, but you know, very very wonderful weapon. Uh, very very uh, accurate up to 50 yards. But there's a lot of things that I don't like about this weapon. Um, you know, it's you know, it's one of the weapons. I mean, it, it, you see a lot. You know, it's the most shootable sidearm. But the thing that I don't like about it, it is an auto. And one of the things that a lot of people forget about autos is that they're prone to jam. Now, the big debate is uh, the one thing that a lot of people will say that makes um, autos, you know, more more desirable than a revolver is that the magazine beds are quick to load. Well, that's true. But if you get into a situation and you don't have more loaded magazine than bad guys, well, guess what? You're going to have to stop and reload one of these suckers so you can keep fighting. That could cost someone their life in a survival situation. Also, being an auto, it can jam. So that's why, for number two, I'm going to go with my trusty Model 66 Smith & Wesson 357 Magnum Double Action Revolver. The only thing that I've done to this particular pistol, it's never been to a gunsmith. Um, I've had this gun for quite a few years. I've shot it a lot. Um, one of the things that I have done to it was I changed the, the original factory Uncle Mike's pistol grip and went with a hoed pistol grip. And, uh, you know, the accuracy just went through the roof for me. Um, and the reason why I will go with a revolver, simply put, yes, it's slower to load than an auto. But to increase my speed on loading, I have my handy dandy stripper clip. Well, sorry, speed loader. Stripper clips for the bolt action speed loaders for the revolver. But if I don't have a, you know, a loaded speed loader, I can always just load the rounds in individually, which just really to me makes more sense than, you know, trying to carry a ton of magazines, you know, in a bad situation. And if anyone else wants to maybe argue my claim that, that I believe that a revolver is a better weapon in a survivalist situation, obviously it's been working for many years. Before the days of cartridge, it worked well in black powders. This here is a, you know, an 1847 Birdie uh, Walker Colt. You know, this is not an original, obviously. Good luck finding an original. But... You know, if it was work, if the revolver design has been working, you know, since the 1800s, maybe we shouldn't, you know, be, you know, go too far. You know, it's still working today. And, uh, you know, before I begin eating up too much more time with that, because uh, I don't want to bore any viewers to death, but let's just go ahead and move on. So number two would be my 357 Magnum. Uh, on to number three. Um, you know, I see a lot of people talking about tactical folders, and that's cool and all, you know, tactical folders, easy to carry and everything like that. But if I'm in a survival situation, uh, I'm going to want a good fixed plate. Now, I bought this knife, you know, some years ago at Walmart, you know, it was about 10 bucks. You know, you don't have to, you know, break the pocketbook to get something that works. And, uh, you know, it is full tang, you know, and to me, you know, I'm going to trust the fixed blade a lot quicker than I'm going to trust a folder in a survival situation. Simply put, because it's just, you know, it's going to be more durable. You know, you're not going to have to worry about breaking it as quickly as you might say, you know, uh, uh, a tactical folder. And, you know, with these wooden grips, they just make that knife look so cute and cuddly. You know, and you're welcome to argue that if you'd like to. You know, it's just a good fixed blade. It doesn't have to be overly priced if you're like me who lives on a budget. So that would be number three. Uh, number four would be my bug out pack. Now, we could say spend a lot of time on that, but, you know, the pack itself, you know, I'm always adding something new to it. Um, I'm always taking something out that I thought may have been a good idea at one time, but, then, you know, I changed my mind. But, you know, just for the record, you know, you might try to say, that, oh, you know, Magnum, that's more than, you know, one item. Well, all those items are housed in one pack. So, you know, I just consider that a loophole. But, 
you know, in all honesty, uh, you know, I'm also not the first to say something to that extent. So, number four would be my bug out pack. Number five, I'm going to put a big question mark on. And uh, the reason why I'm going to put a big question mark on there, if you're an inspiring survivalist, um, or you're one of these people who believe in the zombie apocalypse, and you're trying to use these videos as uh, tutorials to prepare for such a thing. Um, the thing I will say is always look for new and better ideas to carry equipment and gear. Um, so that's why I'm going to put number five as a question mark, you know, because I myself am always looking for new ways to carry more gear and not weigh myself down to the point where I can't run with this stuff. You know, you know remember, you got to carry it. So, uh, number five with the big question mark is my tactical belt. Um, this to me made a lot of sense, um, you know, to take something like this. Uh, this is just another way I can carry more things. Um, if you're one of these people that you, you know, spent a lot of money on a good combat rig, great. I'm glad you had the money to do it. And, uh, you know, I mean, it looks cool and everything, but if you don't have a lot of money, this is the next best thing. Uh, any military surplus would work in this case. You know, if you're on a budget, find what you can afford. Um, let's start with the belt here itself. And that, you know, I bought the belt at Walmart. I think I bought it, you know, a couple of years back for maybe, you know, three, four bucks. You know, and it's got extra spots to carry ammunition. Uh, the speed loader pouch, I bought from Cheaper Than Dirt. Same with the, the, the Universal Pistol holster. You know, it's all total, I probably spent a total of 30 bucks, and it does the same job as an expensive combat rig. So, you know, to me, that made sense. You know, get what you can afford. Uh, it doesn't have to be over the top. So, those are my five things. Um, let's recap real quick. Uh, number one, my trusty German K98 Mauser, left over from World War II. Um, I'm glad that, uh, I'm pretty sure there's a few World War II veterans that are, that, Glad it's in the hands of one of the good guys. Uh, number two, my 357 Magnum. Number three, my Winchester fixed blade. Number four, my bug out pack. And number five, my tactical pistol belt, which I will once again say has a big question mark behind it because of the simple fact that I believe that we should always be changing. So since no one tagged me, um, I'm just throwing it out. If anybody else has any ideas or maybe some feedback, uh, I would definitely love to hear it. Thank you all and God bless you.